In his 2000 song called Lovin' Me, Nelly declared that he, quote, picked up the mic and put the drugs down. And for several years, the St. Louis rapper was on the straight and narrow path, racking up number one songs, three Grammy Awards, platinum albums, movie roles, and putting his St. Lunatics crew on the map, all while garnering fans in the hip-hop and country music industries. Although he's managed to maintain longevity in show business, the veteran artist has been facing some major battles in recent years. It's about to get hot in here! But before we jump into this mess, don't forget to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of barbecue beef jerky, buffalo ranch popcorn, and green apple licorice. Despite earning the label as one of hip-hop's good guys, the cracks in his persona started to show almost immediately. It all started with the music video for his song, Tip Drill. In case you're unaware, the song references a woman with an ugly face and a nice body. And in the music video, Nelly slides a credit card in between a woman's apple bottom. In 2004, he was scheduled to have a bone marrow drive at Spelman, the historically black women's college, in conjunction with his For Show For Kids Foundation. The event meant a lot to him since his sister Jackie had been diagnosed with leukemia, and Nellie had been trying to raise awareness of the need for marrow and blood stem cell donors among minorities. However, once the students at Spelman caught wind of the Tip Drill music video, they pressured the rapper to cancel the event. The school's president of student affairs told MTV.com, Spelman is concerned about the negative images of women in popular culture, particularly the misogynistic lyrics and images that constantly portray women in a sexual nature. The fellas over at Morehouse College even joined the Spelman student body to organize a demonstration to protest Nelly's event. Before Nelly had a chance to lace up his Air Force Ones and head out to the event, word got back to his foundation about the uproar his video had caused among college students. The foundation quickly canceled the bone marrow drive. Sadly, Nelly's sister lost her battle with leukemia one year later. During the first eight years of his career, Nelly released five studio albums. In other words, he was working his butt off like there was no tomorrow. But then some crazy allegations popped up online. Nelly has always proclaimed he was a very small teenager with a high metabolism, and he didn't bulk up until later in life when he started lifting weights. But in 2008, a high-profile substance dealer alleged that Nelly received some artificial help to obtain his beefy physique. According to Radar Online, the dealer gave cops a list of celebrities, including several rappers, who he claimed were using illegal bodybuilding drugs. And well, Radar Online said Nelly's name was on the list. In response, the rapper said, The only people who say that are people who don't work out. Anyone who goes to the gym knows that what Nelly is doing is nothing. He added that he would hit up his local GNC and pick up supplements and muscle milk, but that was about it. So was the allegation just a bunch of tomfoolery? We're unsure, but three years later, after a private disagreement, a club promoter who goes by the name of Slim hopped on Twitter and put all of Nelly's little business on Front Street. In his tweets, Slim claimed Nelly lost all of his money due to a severe gambling problem. Slim added that Nelly also spent his money on his then-girlfriend, Ashanti, and was in danger of losing his home to foreclosure. And then, get this, Slim claimed that Nelly was addicted to steroids and was allegedly abusing a white powdery substance. Nelly clapped back in tweets of his own and insisted the allegations were all cap. In a typo written message, he wrote, I know some hoping that foreclosure statement is true, but I'm sorry, epic fail. So that was the second time Nelly was accused of doing substances and the second time he had to defend himself publicly. But wait, it gets worse. In the aftermath of their Twitter spat, BET.com cranked the messiness up a notch by reaching out to Slim to ask him to add more insight to his allegations. Not only did Slim double down on his claims, but he challenged Nelly to take a lie detector test. As of this video, it doesn't appear that Nelly took him up on the offer. Maybe Slim was onto something with those broke allegations because seven months later, American Express filed a lawsuit against the rapper for a little over $20,000 in unpaid charges. Now, let's fast forward to October 2012. Nelly was on tour when his bus rolled through a checkpoint in a small town in Texas. When law enforcement officials searched the bus, they found 36 baggies of heroin, more than 10 pounds of MJ, and a loaded 45 caliber Blicky. 
Was Nelly on tour or was he pushing weight? The cops weren't sure. A passenger on the bus named Brian Jones, who some claim was working as Nelly's bodyguard, took the fall for the massive bust and admitted all of the illegal contraband belonged to him. So he was hauled off to the clinker and Nelly was free to go. And what was the first thing Nelly did after the smoke settled? He hopped on Twitter, of course. He identified Brian as a longtime friend and employee. Nelly also said he was, quote, mad as hell that someone he knew for over 10 years would jeopardize his life and his career that way. In a strange twist, Brian pleaded not guilty to the felony charges. Unfortunately, we're unable to locate the results of the case. But if he did spend some time behind bars for those charges, he wasn't locked up for long because in 2015, Nelly and Brian were involved in yet another incident. This time, it all went down in Tennessee when cops pulled Nellie's tour bus over for not having a required Department of Transportation sticker on it. When the officer caught a strong whiff of that sticky icky icky, he searched the tour bus and, according to TMZ, the officer found a baggie with crystal rocks that tested positive for meth, a small amount of MJ, and a stash of guns. Nellie was hauled off to jail for felony possession of MJ and possession of paraphernalia since cops found about 100 small Ziploc bags commonly used for the sale of substances and a second man identified as Brian Jones got locked up for firearm possession. So was this the same Brian Jones that got locked up the first time Nellie's bus got raided? The same man Nellie was so disappointed in and accused him of jeopardizing his life and his career? Most likely so. Nellie's lawyer told CNN that Nellie wasn't associated with the contraband that was allegedly discovered. His lawyer also added that more than 15 people had access to the bus and that the crystal rocks that tested positive for meth were actually just some molly. Nellie copped a deal and the felony charges were dropped. The conviction would be wiped from his record after 11 months of probation. We're not quite sure what happened to Brian, though. With that ordeal behind him, Nellie had other issues to face in 2016. He was hit with a federal tax lien for unpaid taxes dating back to 2013. As for the total amount, well, TMZ reported Uncle Sam was demanding close to $2.5 million. And then the state of Missouri came knocking and claimed he owed them close to $150,000 in unpaid state taxes. While sources close to the rapper told TMZ he was working with tax authorities to resolve the issues, a writer with Spin magazine suggested that Spotify users stream Nelly's music so he could use the royalty payments to pay his tax debt. In response, streams of Nelly's songs reportedly increased by 90%, but a source noted that it would take hundreds of millions of streams to make a tiny dent in the rapper's tax debt. But hey, at least they tried. And then in October 2017, while in Washington on tour with Florida Georgia Line, Nellie was taken into custody after a 22-year-old college student named Monique Green accused him of taking advantage of her in his tour bus while it was parked in a Walmart parking lot. The woman said after the alleged act was committed, Nellie pushed her off the bus and threw $100 at her in the parking lot. Despite being in a long-term relationship with Chantel Jackson at the time, Nelly admitted to having unprotected consensual relations with the alleged victim. According to TMZ, Nelly stated Monique was the one who got upset because she thought he was involved with one of his dancers, who was also on the bus at the time. Nelly was released a few hours later without charges being filed. Upon his release, you already know what he did. He hopped on Twitter and wrote, I am beyond shocked that I have been targeted with this false allegation. Prosecutors issued a statement saying they wouldn't proceed with the criminal case because Monique decided not to cooperate. She later filed a civil suit for damages, and her court filings included allegations from two anonymous women in England who claimed the rapper groped them and acted inappropriately toward them in 2016 and 2017. Nelly and Monique settled their lawsuit in September 2018. While the terms were made confidential, Nelly's lawyer told TMZ that no money was exchanged as a part of the case's dismissal. Authorities halted an investigation into the case of one of the English women who accused Nellie of assaulting her due to her failure to testify. Nellie put Chantel out of her misery by ending their seven-year relationship in the summer of 2021. And things were quiet for the rapper up until February 2022, when he lost his marbles and accidentally uploaded an intimate video to his Instagram story. Child, can somebody give Uncle Nellie a social media tutorial? He quickly deleted the footage and said in a statement to TMZ, I sincerely apologize to the young lady and her family. This is unwanted publicity for her, them. This was an old video that was private, never meant to go public. 
Then came January 2023, when a video was shared online, and some people accused the rapper of being on substances during a live performance in Melbourne, Australia. Others were amused by how zesty he looked in the footage. Following the release of the viral video, Nelly shared a reenactment of the performance by comedian Spice Adams on his Instagram story. However, not everyone was laughing. Flesh and Bone of Bone Thugs and Harmony told TMZ that he was proudly sober and he wanted his fellow rappers to follow suit, including Nelly. Flesh advised Nelly to be careful on the road, as substances are now commonly being spiked with fentanyl. He also spoke about Bone Thugs' longtime producer, DJ Unique, who lost two of his sons to overdoses. He also touched on Gangsta Boo, who recently lost her life to a suspected overdose. Nelly has yet to respond to Flesh's statements. Whew, we finally made it to the end. Although this video was jam-packed with some rather worrisome information and incidents, maybe we're just tripping, as usual. Nonetheless, we wish Nelly all the best. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.